The offseason is ticking along for the Blue Jackets. Not a lot of movement yet, but we still have some stuff to talk about. We're talking about Dmitry uh, Vronkov signing his ELC. We are talking about uh, a veteran center from another team that could possibly find a home in Columbus. And we're doing a mailbag segment today. So lots to talk about on today's episode of Locked on Blue Jackets. Your Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, with me as my co-host, Hayden Halson, and we are super excited to be here to bring you the good, the bad, and the ugly of our favorite team and yours, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every day. Locked On Blue Jackets continues to be free and available on all podcast platforms, over on YouTube, and also on SiriusX. Um, so if you have the SiriusXM app, you can find Locked On Blue Jackets there. I also got to let you know that uh, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So Hayden, let's uh, let's jump right into it. There's a new Blue Jacket in town this off season. There's going to be many, but here's the here's the most recent one. Dmitry Frankov, former fourth round pick of the Blue Jackets, a very very highly touted. Russian prospect who's fresh off his stint in the Gagarin Cup finals has signed his entry-level contract. He is making the move over to Columbus. What do we think about that? Very, very excited to get this guy. As you said, he was a fourth round draft pick. So not necessarily a guy that we expected to uh, really flourish, but he has the last few years in the KHL uh, playing for AK Bars Kazan. I hope I s- pronounced that correctly. Uh, either way, uh, I don't care. He's not playing for them anymore. I'd like him to play for the Blue Jackets as soon as possible. Left wing has a hard left wing shot. Um, so can fit him right in the lineup almost immediately just based off the shot alone. Uh, some other things a part of his game are going to need to come along, I'm sure. But as you've talked about many times, the KHL is a league very similar, as similar to the NHL as you can get, really. And he's done well there. Uh, he had a good playoff run this past year. And you're keeping all this in mind. He's Even though he's same Russian rules where like he's played over there for a while. So he's 22. So he's going to be coming over. He'll be 22, 23 years old. So he'll be an older rookie, if you will. But that's not a bad thing because, um, like I said, he had 31 points in 54 games this past season with uh, AK Bars Kazan. Again, hope I'm saying that correct. Had 12 points in 24 playoff games. So he's producing over there. And like I said, he's a guy that we've kept our eyes on for a while. He has a very hard left shot. Going to be very dangerous on the left wing. Um, Hope it translates to the NHL. But yeah, very excited to to get this guy in the system. Yeah, for sure. And you talk about, you know, he's, he's a little bit older. For, for rookies, but, you know, who had his rookie season at 22 years old and led all rookies in goals this season? Kirill Marchenko. Kirill, so, Kirill, yeah. Yeah, Kirill the Thrill, you know? Um, it's going to be it's gonna be really interesting. It does put a little bit more of a log jam in the wing position for the Blue Jackets. You know, they have a lot of wingers and not a lot of centers. I wonder if this, you know, gives them a chance to jumble things up a little bit, maybe move Kent Johnson over to center permanently. But I'm super excited to see how this guy does. I assume that we'll see him at Traverse City in the prospect tournament. I'm not 100% on the rules uh, for that. I don't think he's too old for it yet. So I assume that we'll see him there. We'll see him in prospect camp, if nothing else. And we'll definitely for sure see him in training camp. So I'm super excited to see this guy uh join and be uh, yet another really exciting young Russian player for this team. The Blue Jackets are building up a little core of uh, exciting Russian players, which is uh, which is pretty fun. What are we what are we at? We're at Marchenko, we have uh, Chinikov, Ferankov. Uh I miss I'm missing Tarasov. some guys. Daniel, Daniel Tarasov. Daniel Tarasov. Um, They've got Sergei Ivanov in the system, um, who is a goalie. He'll, he's a, a while away, but he's like their second best goalie prospect, and he's only 19 or 20. So he's uh, we, we, he's coming along. 
Um, there's definitely a guy that I'm forgetting. Um, so excuse me. While Same. I, I feel like the, I'm forgetting. <laughs> the prospect pipeline. Um, Our Russians. Yeah, I think we got all of them on the team. I think we're good there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Girl I was going to say. Is the guy okay. that I forgot about. Um, he was also playing in the KHL this season uh, he's 19 years old was drafted in the fourth round of the 2022 so again i don't know that uh we'll see him anytime soon but again another young russian guy to keep an eye on and if these guys turn out as well as we think karol marchenko is going to turn out that could be uh that could be a fun time um we need a we need a, a center is what we need we need a russian <laughs> center um, and then we can do an all Russia line of Voronkov and Marchenko, and then a center in between. And I think that would be, uh, I think that'd be neat. We might not be able to draft a Russian center right now, but there are some in free agency that we could be looking at, which we will we'll get to later for sure. But I don't mind. Listen, here's the thing: when it comes to building a team, obviously, ideally, would I like them all to be, you know, from the, all bunch of Jack Roslovics and Sean Corrales? Of course. That would be the most fun if we just had all the guys from Ohio. But the truth is, uh, it doesn't matter where they come from. I like picking guys from the same spot though, because there's instant chemistry there. You you'd assume, you know, you're these these guys are professionals living in a completely different part of the world than where they're from. Pretty much all of them. So if you can fill the room up with some guys that are equally talented and are from the same area, then you know you get a good good chemistry there. I think that's, you know, a no brainer. And Yarmo has notoriously loved drafting from Russia. He spooked everybody out when he drafted, uh, Chinikov at 18th overall. That was the complete wild card of the century. And then that's when we knew he likes to draft from the KHL and he's been doing that. He likes to draft uh, the KHL and he has his own list and he will not be paying attention to what anyone else's list says, which is kind of a fun way to approach a draft. But it does stress me out when I'm on a live show trying to explain who this guy is and why we drafted him when all of my research was for the guy that went 19th overall to the Capitals. Um, but it uh, if Bob McKenzie's be- struggling to know the guy, you're fine. If TSN exactly. Bob doesn't know who um, he is, you're not expected to. Yeah, that's that was what that was what comforted me was I think it was Darren Drago was like, who is this guy? And I was yeah. like, oh, Darren Drago doesn't know who he is. I'm probably doing fine. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about uh, that that uh, Russian center that you teased a little bit earlier. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. And then when we come back, we're going to do our mailbag segment. But we're going to start off with a question that I asked CBJ fans over the weekend. And now I'm going to ask uh, Hayden about it. But first, I've got to tell you all about athletic greens because uh i have been taking athletic greens for about a year and a half now i think um and i was super excited by this i wanted a supplement that was kind of an all-in-one that i didn't have to take you know a billion different pills and vitamins uh i was tired all the time i was getting sick a lot and i heard really great things about athletic greens all day i'll give it a try and uh, i love it i haven't looked back since then so uh what is this stuff well with one scoop of AG1, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. Uh, and these things all support gut health, nervous system, immune system, energy, recovery, focus, aging, all of the things that you need to start your day off right. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. Just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. There's no need for a million different pills or supplements to look out for your health. To make it even easier, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs for your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Once again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jackets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today, we're doing a mailbag. So uh, let's let's jump into that. But before we talk about questions that people have asked us, let's talk about a question that I asked the people. Um, reports are coming out of Washington that Evgeny Kuznetsov is unhappy there, that he potentially wants out. I don't think he's officially requested a trade yet, but I think he is extremely unhappy where he is. Evgeny Kuznetsov is 30 years old and is making $7.8 million for the next two seasons. 
he is a very good center. Um, he has spent a bunch of time over the past couple of seasons playing with another pretty good Russian player in uh, Alex Ovechkin. Heard of him. Is this is this someone that the Blue Jackets should go after? I don't think he's a long term solution, but could he be a guy that fills that gap between whoever they draft with their third overall pick this summer and when he's ready to step into the NHL? He absolutely could be a guy. He's he's old, but he's not crazy old. It's only 30, so he would instantly come in and, uh, yes, that is old for the Blue Jackets <laughs> because we are constantly feeling a college team out there, it feels like. But the truth is, he's still got a lot of solid years ahead of him, and he has been a huge, huge key in Alexander Ovechkin's success as an NHLer, being his center uh, for so long. Between him and Backstrom, both those guys have just been feeding uh, Ovi over the years. So he'd be great. He'd be great instantly. I mean, it would be an attractive destination for him just because of the power that we have on wing when you talk about Goudreau and Line, just off the top two names that he's like, man, I could just be dishing off passes to these guys left and right. I could just be the third guy on that line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'd be perfect. Fit. Trying. Perfect fit. And the East is a good place to play, obviously, because the travel, that's why Johnny Goudreau came over here. It's a division he'd be familiar with. He'd get plenty of shots at the Capitals. Um, as long as we have the, the money to pay, I mean, 7.8 is tough. Uh, he's probably going to want more <laughs> than that. It's probably going to be around eight or nine is what he's going to want. Is that a good valuation for him? I don't know. Um, well, he is still under that contract for, I believe the next two seasons. Okay. Gotcha. So this would be a trade, not a free agent signing, which probably makes it a little bit more palatable. Um, I'm just going to double check on that to make sure that I'm not... I like, believe you're correct. <laughs> no, I think you're right. Cause I looked up cap friendly and they don't have him as a free agent for this year. So yeah, you're, he's under contract. Uh, no, yeah. So next season and the season after that, he'll be making 7.8. And then he's a UFA after that blue jackets, I believe have about $20 million in cap space going into next season. You're right. And whatever so, we traded away, you know, that could make room for that. So that stuff could, you know, sort itself out. But we do know that the, that the Jackets are going to make a move this offseason. Mm-hmm. They're going to make a trade. There's no doubt about that. I think right when the season ended, there was already talk that the Jackets were in conversations with the Flyers about Kevin Hayes. Uh, so it's like already Yarmo has been, I'm sure every single day he's calling guys trying to get the best deal for this team another possible trade candidate is elias lindholm up in uh, calgary that would be another center that i'd like to see i wouldn't hate to see the jackets go all in on but if you're telling me between uh lindholm and kuznetsov i'm taking evgeny kuznetsov all day um i do think he is a big part of why alex ovechkin is alex ovechkin uh this isn't just some guy that's been on a good team this is a bonafide NHL all-star uh, through and through. I mean, he's got – he puts up the points. Uh, he's been doing it on bad Caps teams too. This is considered a bad Caps team. He had he had 55 points in 81 games. Um, I was 12... going to bring that up. Is He had a down season this season, and he still had 55 points. You know, it, it could be – you could do worse than, than pick up a guy like um, Kuznetsov. Just in terms of the money – uh, Elias Lindholm is under contract next season for 4.8 and is then a UFA. Kevin Hayes is signed for the next three seasons at 7.1. So, do you want a couple more years of, of control? Do you want to pick up a guy like Lindholm who uh, is a little bit younger than either of those guys? I think Lindholm's um, 28. And something else that kind of came into conversation when I asked people on Twitter this is, um, let me pull up the... Let me pull up the tweet so I can uh, credit the credit the person correctly. Um, so I asked, "Is Evgeny Kuznetsov um, someone that uh, someone that we should we should go after?" Um, and uh, Troy underscore on hockey 
says, are you sure that personality is one you want around your young players? Any ad that Yama makes will be just as much for the locker room as the ice. Uh, and then at green uh, 9510 says, that's why Hayes seems possible because everyone says he's a great locker room guy. Okay. This question that stuff has, I hate the term baggage. Because it feels, I, I just, I don't know. It, it doesn't sit right with me. I think Evgeny Kuznetsov has dealt with some off ice issues over the past couple of seasons. Um, I think a lot of people are a little bit traumatized by the Pierre Luc Dubois situation of if a player is unhappy, he's going to make every, it's going to make it everyone else's problem. And I think people are worried that the same thing will happen with Evgeny Kuznetsov, except we'll be paying him more money and he'll be here for two years. So I can understand why people are wary. Um, I wouldn't hate this. The only question would be, what do you give up for a guy like Kuznetsov? And what do you think it takes to get him out of Washington? Like, is it a case of, do you think that for that second first round pick, like, do you trade that? Do you trade a lower pick and a prospect? Like, how, what do you, what would you give for Evgeny Kuznetsov? Well, you're probably, you, you'd have to give somebody from the current lineup. Uh, you'd have to give up a center. So... You'd pick between Corrali and Roslovic, I think. Both those guys are very tradable. Um, I think Roslovic has a little more upside in terms of point production, but Corrali is a spark plug. Uh, so I don't know what exactly Washington will be looking for. If they're going to be losing a guy who is skillful, uh, uh, I would I would imagine they'd try to replace that as much as possible, which in my opinion would be Roslovic, which again, I'm fine dumping either one of these guys. I love Roslovic. I love Sean Crowley, but for the sake of, you know, having a, a better team, I will happily trade them to the Washington Capitals <laughs> and let them torture me down the road later. But um, I think you'd include one of those guys and I'd be okay including that second first round pick just because you're getting a star for two years um yeah i think that's i think that's fine i think that's worth it the blue jackets still have a first round pick so it's not like it's not like you're not it's not like you're losing out on not having anybody from this draft you'll still have somebody from this draft to look forward to so i think that's a good little package right there just off the bat and then maybe prospect maybe you throw that in there um i don't know it, it sounds exciting just talking about it. We know something's going to happen. We know something is going to happen. Yarma will make a move for a center. He will either do that or he'll try to make a huge splash in free agency again. You Do you think that Yarma just like is just buzzing knowing that he got Gaudreau last season and thinking like, Gaudreau just fell on my lap. I barely tried. Imagine if I tried to get guys to come to Columbus. What could I the do? The Gaudreau we'll situation see. is very funny to me because I don't know if you watched the, I think it was the behind the battle clip of like, they were talking about how happy they were to sign Eric Branson. And then I think Rick Nash like sidles into the room to be like, so <laughs> Eric's got a friend on Calgary that's interested in playing for Columbus. And they're like, <laughs> oh, really? Who? And then they're like, it's Johnny Gaudreau, um, which is just you so funny. And I think that's the thing that has really softened the Gabranson signing for me, is that probably without Gabranson, I don't know that we get Gaudreau. So is that is it worth it to pay him for the next $4 million for the next three years if we get Gaudreau for the next seven? I don't know, but it really softened the blow for me. Um, it's I like it, you, you play beer league hockey. It's like when your buddy's like, hey, I got this guy who wants to sub tonight. Oh, okay, yeah, sure, bring him. Yeah. It's it's, and then he's just a ringer, yeah. He's just Johnny Gaudreau. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Johnny Gaudreau just turning up to. Yeah. I do love. Um, we can't get we can't get too off track here, but I do love stories of like retired NHLers turning up to like beer league and then being forced to play defense and then scoring a bunch of goals anyway. It's very funny to me. Dustin Bluffland um, right now, I think, is playing a lot of beer league, <laughs> and they're like, mm -hmm. "Come on, we don't. I don't want to go against Dustin Bufflin." every freaking night this is i know i think it was mike richards was the one where he would be yeah. playing like a pickup league with his brothers and everyone was like no you have to play defense we refuse to let you play offense which is very funny um in a minute we're gonna get to the mailbag questions because there is actually one about free agency in there that i want to uh, i want to get to that i think is going to be really interesting to talk about so we're gonna do that in just a second but first i've got to tell you about 
game time because I don't know about you, but I'm terrible at planning things. I usually just wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh, I'm going to do something today. Uh, and that doesn't really work if you want to go to like a concert or a hockey game or like a comedy show. Um, but with game time, it kind of does. They've got deals on last minute tickets. They've got a best price guarantee. Uh, if you find the same seat uh, somewhere else or you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. It is the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. You get images of your seat before you buy. So, you know, you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. You're not going to be surprised by a restricted view or being a million miles away from the ice or the band or the comedian. Uh, and tickets are sent directly to your phone. So you never have to dig through your email. I know I've done that before, standing at the doors to an NHL arena, trying desperately to get Ticketmaster or edit that out, trying desperately to get my tickets from my phone. You don't have to do that with Game Time. They're already there. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Create an account. Redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Let's get into the mailbag because there's some fun questions in here. Um, so let's let's start off with the UFAs because that is what we were just talking about. What UFAs do you want Yamaka Kalein to go for to fill some of the Blue Jackets' needs? Is there a difference between the dream, what the dream version of the Blue Jackets looks like next season and the reality? Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull up a list of free agents, um, unless you have anyone that you are thinking about off the top of your head. I do see a couple names. Obviously, half of the... Half of the New York Rangers are available. Uh, Kane, Tarasenko, those are wingers. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly is going to be available as a free agent from Toronto, uh, former Stanley Cup winner, so that's exciting at center. Sean Monahan, former Calgary Flame, now with uh, Montreal this past season. He had uh, he'd only played 25 games. I don't know what was going on there injury-wise, but he had 17 points in those 25 games, but that's a guy that I would be very interested in the Blue Jackets getting. Uh, Jordan Stahl out of Carolina, another guy who, just, who had 34 points in 81 games, a little less uh, production there, but he'd obviously be a guy that we'd want to float in our top two, see the damage he could do with those wingers on his side. Um, yeah, those are just some down the way. Uh, a guy like JT Comfer from uh, Colorado, who's – steadily put up lots of points up there um his hit is his, his he's making 3.5 right now i think he'll be due for a raise i don't know if colorado has the space or if they'll be willing to give that to him but i think a five and a half you know by three-year deal or four-year deal for a jt comfort would be nice that'd be somebody i'd be interested in but yeah i mean there's a difference between the dream blue jackets and the real blue jackets but after last year not anymore. I mean, that's just like, I don't know who wants to play here. I don't know who hears good things about Columbus. I don't know who hears bad things about Columbus. But up until last year, I thought everybody just had a bad opinion on Columbus. And uh, Johnny Gaudreau completely flipped that. So that's really exciting. That that narrative on the Blue Jackets is changing. Um, players constantly look at Columbus as a place to uh, establish themselves as a as an opportunity, if you will to become a great star and a great talent and, uh, you know, have your name in the rafters. The problem is, is I think people look at that Metropolitan Division and they're like, why the heck would I want to play in that? Like the Devils, Canes, Islanders, Rangers? No, 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 no. That's That would be my fear, and I think that's the toughest sell for Yarmo is, hey, come play in the Metropolitan Division, but we got a really good team. You know, like we do have a really good young team. Um, the city... It's nice if you don't compare it to other cities. It is really nice if you don't compare it to other cities. Um, but no, I Jay, I think the the I look at the, the list of free agents and I'm like, Yarmo, call all of them. Just call all of them. I don't care. I don't know what each guy is hearing. I don't know what each guy's opinion on Columbus is, but you don't know if you don't try. So. Sean Monahan's a really interesting option. Uh, yeah, he only played 25 games this season. Uh, but he had 17 points in those 25 games. He had a little bit of a resurgence in Montreal. He and Gaudreau, I believe, are still extremely good friends, extremely close. So there's that connection. 
Um, you know, it, it could be an interesting choice. I don't think he is uh, the kind of player that can play in... I don't think he's the kind of player that can play on Gaudreau's line. I don't think that's the center we should be aiming for with, with Monaghan. But if you can get him for reasonably cheap, um, I mean, he's making he's making 6.3 uh, 6. at the minute. So I would want to give him like way less than that. But he could be a really interesting option to kind of bolster some of the center depth and, you know, just bump bump people up a little bit. Um, but it'll be, it'll be interesting to see. Um, another name I had on my list for guys that, again, is not necessarily going to be a um, a top-line guy, but Lars Eller out of Colorado only had 23 points, uh, but he's only making $3.5 million. And again, he he's a very good bottom six center. Um, we we'll just have a lot of bottom six center guys, but I think he could be a really interesting pickup piece. Problem is, I'm not looking at anyone on this list as hey this is going to be the solution this is the the future top line center um so maybe the maybe the answer is you turn and you look at guys like kuznetsov who have a couple years left on their deals or hayes who has three years left on his like we talked about um in the in the last segment instead of going for free agents who probably you're going to want to give them you know and they go to free agents to make money they go to free agency to sign long deals, especially if, you know, I would be surprised if Ryan, right, Ryan O'Reilly is 32 years old. I would be very surprised if Ryan O'Reilly signs a short-term deal. He's going to sign for five or six years, and that's going to be like likely his last contract. You know, I would love to get Ryan O'Reilly for two years, max. I don't want to pay Ryan O'Reilly long-term. Um, I don't I do think wonder you... If and I... is, the, is the way to go because it's... Um, not necessarily because that's specifically, but a guy like him, because you get the two years and then he can walk. And then hopefully whoever the Blue Jackets draft for that future 1C spot in the draft this season, hopefully what they can do is just kind of swap those two players in and out. Yeah, just a quick thought on Ryan O'Reilly. I don't know how many more years of legit like competitive hockey he has. He looked slow frankly this past like playoff series against florida and he might just have looked slow because he was playing in a maple leafs uniform and they always look slow because they always lose but i truly think like his better days are behind him so that's the reason why i wouldn't want to yeah i wouldn't want to give him tons of money for a long-term contract i'd hope maybe just like a one to two year thing for him uh just to see how he does um if he's up for that Probably not, but again, I, I don't know what people think of Columbus or if it's even interesting. The reason why I like JT Comfer is just because he's kind of a guy that's, I don't know, gotten buried a little bit amongst the stars with the uh, out there in Colorado, and he put up a lot of points. And I'm looking at the hockeywriters.com here, and uh, they said that they have him, his top three destinations are re-signing with Colorado, Minnesota, and the Columbus Blue Jackets. The thing is that the the thing is the Columbus Blue Jackets really, really, really have going for them and that they need to push well that Yarmo needs to push hard in these uh meetings with agents is the fact that they have some top tier goal scorers in Gaudreau and Line and Marchenko and Zach Wierenski coming back. We have so much firepower that it should be a very, very good look destination for anybody that cares about putting up good stats and it's maybe trying to reach that i don't know that next deal you know like jt comfort might not be getting the the, the biggest bag ever this deal but if he goes to columbus for a couple of years lights it up then he's going to get a huge bag so they really need to play into that if you're columbus um Heck, you might even have four or five guys interested in coming to Columbus that you get to choose between. That would be an ideal situation for the Jackets. It seems like every single offseason, the Jackets are always like, can we just get somebody, please? This year might be the year that you actually have a chance to decide and pick and choose who you want. I don't know. I'm looking forward to seeing what bubbles up when free agency hits in July. Um, it's going to be exciting. It. For sure is. Uh, I am unsure what Kekalainen's going to do. 
Um, and I think it, it feels very much like the Johnny Gaudreau signing was the kind of the first piece falling into place. And I think, and I've talked about this a lot on the podcast before, is I think it made a lot of other people sit up and be like, well, what does Gaudreau know about Columbus that I don't know? Should Columbus be a place that I want to go? Maybe Columbus is a place that I want to go. I think, you know, and then you, you you have a guy like that. People are like, well, hey, if I go there, I can play with Gaudreau and I can score, you know, 40 goals a season while he passes to me, you know? So I think you're right. I think there is going to be um, more interest than there has been in recent years. I think that's kind of the thing has been, well, no one wants to go to Columbus. Why would anyone want to move to Ohio willingly? Like, well, hey, first of all, Columbus is a really great city. Like I unironically really love Columbus. Like I think it's a, I think it's a phenomenal city. It's one of my favorites. Um, am I biased because of the Blue Jackets? Maybe, but I still think it's a really great city. The food is great. Um, the city itself is great. The people are great, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and since getting here, Johnny Gaudreau has done nothing but talk about how much he loves it here in Columbus. And so, you know, I think a lot of people are like, well, maybe I should take a little bit more of a look at Columbus and be like, maybe this is a place that I want to play. Maybe this is a place that I want to raise my family. You you see it all the time. Guys that get traded away from Columbus move back when they retire. You know, like Cam Atkinson got traded. I think he sold his house and then a season later just bought a new house in Columbus because he missed it. You know, he rebought the same house. Gonna retire here. It's, yeah, he, he bought the same house. Yeah, Atkinson Cam bought the same house. He <laughs> sold it and then so bought funny. it back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah, you know they like it so much here. You know, it, it, when players retire from here, they move back here because they like it. You know, it's it's a great city. It's a great place to be, and I think it's going to be really interesting to uh, to see who comes to Columbus in free agents. Because I agree, I think Yama's going to make a move. As much as he talks a big game about how he would much rather develop in the draft than tra- than grow the team through trading or free agency, I think he's going to make a he's going to make some kind of swing. Um, whether that is at center, whether that is at defense, we'll uh, we'll see. I don't think it should be at defense, but I think this season shocked a lot of people. But everyone was broken, so I don't know what the argument is there. It'll be interesting to see, um, and it'll also be interesting to see because of the new coach as well. Whoever that ends up being, I think that could probably have some impact on you know. If they get whole, if they get you know um, Dragon, for example, does he have any sway with some of these guys? Has he played with uh, you know? Has he coached some of these guys? So I think that'll be that'll be interesting. Um, we're going to talk a lot more about free agency as we kind of get up to it because I think there's going to be a lot of stuff going on for the Blue Jackets. Um, they don't have a ton of guys to re-sign. Um, I don't believe. That are, you know, they don't have a lot of big name guys to resign. A lot of the big contracts were traded away. Um, so, you know, Nyquist, Voracek, uh, guys like that. So the only real signings that they have to kind of pay attention to is, um, let's see, who is on this list? It's the younger guys. So Josh Dunn needs a new contract. Trey Fix Wolanski needs a new contract. Um Marcus Bjork needs a new contract. You know, it's guys It's guys like that. So Columbus is going to have a ton of cap space to play with. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see who we're going to be welcoming to Columbus uh, in July. Free agency is going to get here before we know it. I feel like I'm going to blink and it's going to be free agency. And I'm going to have to no research into this. And they're going to jump scare me with someone. <laughs> I just remember in other free agency years when it was like, oh, is this guy staying? Every first of all, every free agency off season has been better since Panarin left, and that was the worst summer of my life. That was the worst <laughs> summer of my life. Summer of 2019, just all the ways that Panarin teased us on Instagram. You know, pictures of him calling the, picking up the phone. Who's calling? You know, pictures of him in Florida. Like, oh, the weather sucks down here. Just as long as Blue Jackets fans don't have to deal with that emotional roller coaster which, as you said, doesn't sound like we got all of our big-name guys locked up, so it is. We are purely on the hunt, guys, as Blue Jackets fans. It's just, let's go get somebody good. And this is the first year where we can actually be like, hey, who wants to play for us? Because we got the talent. We need to play into that as much as possible. Um, it's worked for other teams before, you know? So, I, like, I don't think, I don't know, like, Washington isn't the sexiest place to play, but yet, People have constantly flooded there to try to play. So I wonder what we, what is available for us. And yeah, it will be, you're right, Jay. It will be a very, very interesting offseason because the Jackets did make a lot of noise last offseason with their 
big Goudreau signing. So I think people are kind of expecting them to do the same, which is why you're seeing Colorado hockey writers put uh, uh, JT Comfer on the list to go to the Blue Jackets because they know the Blue Jackets are looking for center depth and uh, they have a lot to offer as far as anybody that wants to play center because left and right wings were solid there. So just move the puck either side. Left or right, <laughs> somebody scoring <laughs> or back. going to be there. Yeah, Blankenberg so and Rensky. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be. It's going to be. I'm so excited for next season. Everyone's going to stay healthy and everyone's going to do just great. I believe in this team now. <laughs> um, we got a ton of really great questions, and we have run out of time to answer some of them. So I think we are going to split this into two, and we'll answer the rest of them in tomorrow's episode. Except for we're going to finish off with a fun one. Um, and for people who don't know, longtime listeners will know, but you know, the Blue Jackets are my second great love in life. My first great love in life is obviously Star Wars. Um, and someone asked what the best three Star Wars medias are. Um, and so I don't know if you have thoughts on this, Hayden, uh, but I, oh, yeah. I definitely have thoughts on which Star Wars medias are my favorite. Oh, yeah, I got them. Are you kidding me? You kidding me? It's an easy one. Well, it's actually hard because there's so many nowadays. You know what I mean? Like, I've had the same three for so long, but with these new shows, it's hard. It's hard to. But what do you got? I'm I'm interested. So my first one is uh, Clone Wars, the the animated oh, show because okay. I think it's so underrated, and people are like, "Oh, I don't want to watch a kids show," and then you watch it, and it's incredible. Um, my second one I'm t- is technically two that I'm combined into one, uh, which is Rogue One, which is my favorite Star Wars film, bar none, and Andor, which is some of the best TV that I have seen maybe ever. Um, so that's my second one. And then my third one, I'm going to go a little bit off book here. Um, and this is technically no longer canon because when Disney bought Star Wars, they basically said everything that is not the first six movies is no longer canon. Uh, but it's the Heir to the Empire books by Timothy Zahn, which is the original um, starting point for Thrawn. And it's basically the, the original sequel trilogy before they did, you know, Rise of Skywalker and all that nonsense. So those are my three, <laughs> um, my three top stars. I could talk forever about Star Wars, so I'm going to cut myself off that. But that's, <laughs> those are my picks. <laughs> so, okay, good. I also could talk forever about Star Wars. Uh, but yeah, just... I think the most three, the three that I come back to the most are, uh, this is a wild card pick, but it's just one that I really, really enjoy. Mandalorian season two, that season, the way they ended that season paid off so hard for any new Star Wars fan, for any old Star Wars fan. um, I'm not going to spoil it, but just watch it. Mandalorian season two, amazing. Uh, I got... Revenge of the Sith up there. That is the that is the peak of my childhood. I believe I was uh, like nine when that movie came out. And I remember being in theaters like this is this is real life. Like after I see this movie, I can pass away at the age of nine because I've seen it all. I've been waiting for this my whole life. And uh, it was a great it paid off. It did. It was a great movie. And then obviously Empire Strikes Back. Got to put a classic in there. It's hard not to put uh, a new hope because that was the one that started it all. So so uh, so amazing to go back and rewatch, thinking that it all came from that movie. But they upped the game with Empire Strikes Back. That really took the the universe to the next level. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be rock solid with those three. I got um, Mandalorian season two. Please watch it. Uh, episode three and episode five. Yeah, I mean the thing is that there's very there's no real wrong answer. To no, this, not at all. all Star Wars is good Star Wars, except for, and I'm going to be controversial here, <laughs> The Last Jedi is bad and should feel bad about itself. I know a lot of people loved it. Um, and Rise of Skywalker, I think a lot of people hate it, so I feel okay with saying that that one was bad. But it's just, I don't know, it's good, man. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good universe, and I love that every, every time you add something new in, I'm watching the third season of The Mandalorian at the minute, so uh, no one spoiled this for me, but when you watch like characters get added in and you're like hey i know that guy from this shit from this thing or that thing or you know it's a fun it's a fun universe um and so if i could do locked on star wars i absolutely would (laughs) locked on star wars and locked on blue jackets like those are the those are the places to be um but like i said we're gonna do more questions tomorrow we got a bunch of questions about prospects specifically so i think we're gonna do a prospect specific mailbag tomorrow which should be fun um 
I've been Joe Foster. You can find me on Twitter at uh, underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-R. Forgot my own Twitter handle there for a second. Uh, you can find Hayden over at Hayden H971. You can find the show at L-O underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email us at lockdownbluejackets at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Thank you for making this your first listen of the day every day. Uh, Locked on Blue Jackets continues to be free and available on all podcast platforms. We are over on YouTube. We're on Sirius X. Um, and uh, yeah, we just uh, we appreciate you hanging out with us. The The subscriber count on YouTube continues to go up and up. And I, for one, think that is real neat. And uh, until tomorrow, make sure you stay locked on. <laughs>